What's up everybody? Welcome on my channel and today we're going to do a review of this little guy, the MCX16 for Fujifilm system. Hang on tight, we're coming right back. This is the box it came in. Tiny little guy. See, size of my hand. All right, so I got this little guy here a couple days ago and uh, I went out to try it out. Really cool little gadget. So uh, this MCX16 here, I'm basically doing a little review rapidly, quickly, because I um, didn't see much of any reviews on YouTube. I saw a lot of them on the MCX11, which is um, 11 millimeters compared to 60 millimeters, which is a difference of millimeters. And um, what does that mean in terms of um, shooting? Well, I'm not gonna go specific in terms of uh, technical aspect of things because but as you know on my channel I don't go technical I'm more into real life situations um, I have done a couple of tests outside and um, here they are lots of good details with this uh, little um, extension tube here for macro photography. Uh, I'm a wedding photographer as you all know. I do like to take macros for rings, flowers, details, invitation cards and all that sort of things that you would normally do in a wedding. Now you can buy a macro lens. Uh, micro lenses are quite expensive for what they are. If you're all into macro and you like to, you know, take photos of uh, ants and uh, little bugs and you like to take photos of plants, macro is amazing. You should go for the lens. If you are like me that you need macro for a little, you know, a few things here and there and you will not be using it a lot, then don't go for a macro lens because that's a lot of money. If you can afford it, that's great. So I'm going to show you a little bit closer here what it looks like. Here we go. So I've put a, a lens cap on both sides, which I'm going to remove now. Here we go. All right. So Fujifilm MCX16. This is how it looks like. You see you have the red dot right here and it's a very simple uh, ring. Basically, you can see the contacts right here. Uh, let's see if you can see them. You can see the contacts right here and inside all around here. Those are used for uh, connecting the autofocus, auto exposure from the camera to the lens. You can still connect them, which is a huge plus. That's one thing that uh, you guys might enjoy a lot is the fact that you can autofocus. I have been doing this in reverse. You know, when you reverse the lens with my Canon setup back in the day, um, that, was, that was also very good, but you had no control over exposure. You had no control over um, autofocus and you had to do everything based on, you know, distance to the object, very, getting very close. And that was about it. So this is an actual plus, a big plus for the price you pay. Thank God. Thank God. And uh, the other thing is this little guy here is very, um, looks very tough, resistant, and honestly well built. It's actually very, uh, very resistant. You can throw it in your bag. Um, that's why I like to put the lens cap on both sides since I always have a lens on my cameras. Um, that way, see, it becomes a little package, very thin, very small, a little bit bigger than the 11, but um, it, it actually fits anywhere. You can put it in any pocket in your bag and then um, off you go, forget about it. Basically, you can get real close to things and uh, you, your working distance becomes really, really tiny. Like I use the 56 millimeters F 1.2. That's my best portrait lens all around that I use for weddings. Most of the time, that's the one that I'm using. Um, that's the one that I used on the shots that you saw earlier, like this one. To be honest, you can get really close to your subject. Like it's something in the order of from 60 centimeters, you can get down to 11 centimeters with this lens which is a big plus. You can take really tiny details and that is amazing. Another thing I want to tell you before I end this video is that um, I have had a hard time with wide aperture with my lenses. I tried my uh, 56 mil 
uh, 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, all the way up to uh, 5.6. And that was a sweet spot to me in terms of macro. You can go down to 2.8. At 2.8, it still looks good, still looks uh, sharp. Uh, if you go under 2.8, you will get results such as this one. There you go, this is straight out of the camera. You can see that the light becomes um, over-exaggerated. Even if I lower the ISO, the shutter speed and all, all that, what happens is that the, the bokeh, let's say, you know, the depth of field becomes a bit creamy and it loses the sharpness. So you don't wanna go under 2.8, uh, preferably 5.6, because it still allows you to do a good close up into the, um, the, the object, into the macro, and it still looks very, very, very sharp. Such as this photo here with my Tudor watch. Uh, you can see the details, it's very sharp, very nice, very uh, close, there you go. So thank you very much for checking out my video. Um, I very much appreciate all the subscribers. Please subscribe under here if that's not done yet. And like always, stay tuned and keep shooting closely. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.